Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news tonight with me, Frank Pereira on Rajya Sabha Television. Here are the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi returns to New Delhi after concluding three-nation tour of Portugal, US and the Netherlands. Pakistan reacts to joint uh, US-India statement, says Washington is talking New Delhi's language. Former Lok Sabha Speaker and five-time Lok Sabha MP Meera Kumar files nomination papers for presidential polls. Congress President Sonia Gandhi calls upcoming contest a fight of ideology, principle and truth. Rajya Sabha Chairman Mohammad Hamid and Minister's oath of office and secrecy to two new members, BJP MP Bhavnan Singh from Manipur and Biju Danta Dal MP Pratap Keshri Deb from Odisha. And amid the border standoff, Beijing uses its state-run media to call India unruly, claims that uh, while China usually avoids making an issue of border disputes, New Delhi can't afford a showdown. Prime Minister Narendra Modi returned home after concluding his three-nation tour of Portugal, the US and the Netherlands. The highlight of his four-day trip was the US leg of the visit where he met President Donald Trump for the first time. But two days after the meeting between Prime Minister Modi and President Trump, Pakistan has accused the US of speaking India's language and of dual standards on the issue of Kashmir. The Indo-US joint statement had sternly urged Islamabad to ensure that its territory is not used to launch terrorist attacks on other countries. Responding to this, Pakistan's interior minister Chaudhry Nisar said, and I quote, It seems as though the blood of Kashmiris is not at all important to the United States and international laws relating to human rights do not apply to Kashmir. Ignoring the worst form of state terrorism does not only mock justice and international norms, but also exposes the dual standards of those upholding human and democratic rights." Unquote. Pakistan has also slammed Hezbollah Mujahideen chief Syed Salahuddin being named a global terrorist by the US as completely unjustified. Both the Indo-US joint statement and the US action on Salahuddin are being seen as a major diplomatic victory for India, which has long accused Pakistan of backing terror in India and more specifically in Kashmir. Well, opposition candidate Meera Kumar today filed her nomination papers for the presidential elections. Meera Kumar was jointly fielded by the 17 opposition parties, including the UPA against NDA's candidate Ramnath Kovind. <laughs> Former Lok Sabha Speaker and five-time Lok Sabha MP Meera Kumar filed her nomination for the presidential polls on Wednesday. She filed her papers in the presence of top Congress leaders including party president Sonia Gandhi and former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh. Backed by 17 opposition parties, Meera Kumar will contest against NDA's candidate Ramnath Kovind. She said the election will be a battle of ideologies based on democratic values, inclusiveness in society and freedom of the press and individuals. हमारी लड़ाई जो हम हमेशा रेखांकित करते रहे हैं कि विचारधारा की लड़ाई है वो शुरू हो जाती है देश चौराहे पर खड़ा है एक ओर का रास्ता हमें ले जाता है उस ओर जहां संकीर्णता है तंग दिली है तंग विचार है और गरीबों और दलितों और दबे हुए लोगों की कोई सोच नहीं है दूसरा रास्ता हमें ले जाता है उस तरफ जहां जो दलित हैं गरीब हैं कमजोर हैं मजलूम हैं महिलाएं हैं उनकी गरिमा उनके अधिकार उनके विकास की हम बात करें Standing alongside Meera Kumar on Wednesday were NCP's Sharad Pawar, CPIM General Secretary Sitaram Yachuri, Trinamool Congress leader Derek O'Brien and leaders from the DMK, SP, BSP, RJD and JMM. We have a fight for the truth and the truth. We are fighting for the truth and the truth. We are standing on the side of the government and we want to protect it. 
दूसरी तरफ खड़े है वो जो संविधान की बुनियाद को ही वो जो है कमजोर करते हैं लड़ाई वो है मीरा कुमार विल स्टार्ट हर कैंपेन फ्रॉम गुजरात साबरमती आश्रम फ्रॉम फ्राइडे शी विल ऑल्सो विजिट मुंबई बैंगलोर एंड बिहार बिफोर रैपिंग अप हर कैंपेन ऑन जुलाई फिफ्टीन टू डेज बिफोर द इलेक्शन वोटिंग फॉर द इलेक्शन फॉर द फिफ्टीन प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया विल टेक प्लेस ऑन जुलाई सेवनटीन द रिजल्ट विल बी डिक्लेयर ऑन जुलाई ट्वेंटियथ विदना विक्रम सिंह एम विशाल दया रविंद्र शोरान रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी Well, Union Minister Venkaiah Naidu filed another set of nomination papers on behalf of the NDA's presidential nominee Ramnath Kovind on the last day of filing nominations for the presidential elections today. Naidu was accompanied by YSR Congress leader Raja Mohan Reddy and the BJP leader and Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar. Kovind is currently campaigning across the country for the July 17th polls. Kaval hamara तैतीस पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज जो एनडीए में है उसके अलावा पांच पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज जो एनडीए के बाहर है वो लोग भी समर्थन देने के लिए घोषणा किया है राज्यसभा चेयरमैन मोहम्मद हामिद अंसारी ऑन वेनेसडे एडमिनिस्टर दी ओथ ऑफ ऑफिस एंड सीक्रेसी टू टू न्यू मेंबर्स बीजेपी एमपी भावनंद सिंह फ्रॉम मणिपुर एंड बिजू जनता दल एम प्रताप के देव फ्रॉम ओडिशा The ceremony was conducted at the Rajya Sabha Chairperson's Chamber in Parliament House. Rajya Sabha Chairman Mohammad Hamid Ansari on Wednesday administered the oath to new members of the House K Bhavanand Singh of the BJP and Pratap Keshri Dev of the BJD. After the oath taking ceremony Bhavanand Singh who is also the Manipur State BJP president said resolving internal problems and raising issues relating to his state will be his first priority. He also listed providing job opportunities to the youth as the most important task at hand. This is the first time that the BJP has a member from Manipur in the Rajya Sabha. लेकिन employment का तो जरूर है, लेकिन employment तो generate करना पड़ेगा. We have to empower the people. We can't just create jobs. So we have to do such a way that we empower the people to get like skill development is there. So we have to put emphasis on that. BJD leader Pratap Keshri Dev was elected uncontested from Odisha while Bhavanand took the oath in Manipuri Pratap Keshri Dev did so in his language Odia Leader of the House Arun Jaitley and MOS Parliamentary Affairs Mukhtar Abbas Naqvi were also present at the ceremony Ravindra Sharan's report for Rajya Sabha TV A union cabinet on Wednesday approved the 7th pay commission recommendations on allowances for central government employees with 34 modifications the revised rates will be effective from the 1st of July the move will benefit 34 lakh civilian employees and 14 lakh defense forces personnel the cabinet has also given in principle approval for the disinvestment of debt ridden public carrier air india finance minister arun jaitley said the group will be set up to finalize modalities and details of disinvestment including the quantum of stake sale The airline has a debt of more than 52000 crore rupees. The decision was taken at a cabinet meeting chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi. Civil Aviation Mantralay ka jo prastavana thi ki finance minister ki adhyakshata mein ek group bane jo iski baaki sari modalities ko tay kare usko swikar kiya gaya. कितना डिसइन्वेस्ट होगा किस प्रक्रिया के माध्यम से होगा उसके एसेट्स के संबंध में उसके डेट के संबंध में होटल कंपनीज के संबंध में ये सारी जो प्रक्रिया और निर्णय है ये अब ग्रुप लेगा Delhi Assembly Speaker Ram Nivas Goel has ordered a one-month jail for two Aam Aadmi Party workers who hurled paper missiles and raised slogans during the ongoing session of the Delhi Assembly on Wednesday. The men, who were identified as AAP members Rajan Kumar and Jagdeep Rana, were sitting in the visitors' gallery when they raised slogans against the Delhi government. Both of them were later marshaled out of the assembly and were allegedly thrashed by AAP MLAs. The house was briefly adjourned after the incident when proceedings resumed later. The two men said that they took the step as they were unhappy with the Arun Kejriwal led party and the alleged corruption cases against Delhi minister Satyendra Jain. तरीका उनका सही या गलत हो सकता है लेकिन उन्होंने भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ अहिंसात्मक तरीके से अपनी बात उठाई है. उनको अंदर मार डाला जाएगा जिस प्रकार से बंद करके हमले किए जा रहे हैं मुझे नहीं लगता कि वो जिंदा भी हो पाएंगे. 
ये स्पीकर की बहुत नाकामी है विधानसभा के अंदर कोई इस तरह से घुस आए पहले वो घुस आए नारे लगाए और फिर एम एल उसको पीटे खूनों खून करें उसको मारने तक जाए यह आज विधानसभा की गिरमा को सबसे बड़ी चोट लगी है Well, as India and China are busy trading accusations of intrusion into each other's territory, a state-run Chinese daily on Wednesday claimed India needs to be taught the rules of dealing with border disputes. Meanwhile, China warned India that future visits of its pilgrims to Kailash Mansarovar through the Nathala Pass will depend on whether India mends its ways. The border standoff continues between India and China. even as beijing used its state run media to call india unruly and said it needs to be taught the rules an opinion piece published by chinese daily global times claimed that china usually avoids making an issue of border disputes the article also said india can't afford a showdown with china on border issues besides calling india arrogant the tabloid said india's gdp was only a quarter of china's but it asserted that china had no desire to confront india in another development china justified road construction in sikkim claiming that the area was undoubtedly located on its side of the border under the 1890 sino british treaty on tuesday china launched a diplomatic protest with india accusing indian troops of crossing the boundary in the sikkim region and demanded their immediate withdrawal zhongfang in beijing 和新德里都已经向印度方面提出了严正的交涉，表明了我们的严正的立场。我在这必须强调，中方对发展中印友好关系是有诚意的，同时中方维护自身主权权益的立场也是坚定不移的。The Chinese statement comes a day after the Chinese military accused Indian troops of objecting to a road construction in what it claimed to be Chinese territory. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the first batch of 2,000 pilgrims left the Jammu base camp on Wednesday for this year's Amarnath Yatra that starts on June 29th. State Deputy Chief Minister Nirmal Singh flagged off the annual pilgrimage. Singh said that the government had taken necessary steps to provide the best facilities to the devotees during the 40-day-long yatra. Following intelligence reports stating a terror threat, highest level of security is in force for the yatra. thousands of security personnel have been deployed on the route the pilgrims also expressed confidence in the army and the government for their arrangements the yatra will conclude on august 7th koi is prakar ki baat nahi hogi jisme ki yatra mein baadha aaye iski guarantee jo hai sarkar deti hai humne bahut se hazaron ki taidad mein suraksha karmi iske liye lagaye hue hain jisme hamari sena hai suraksha bal hai हमारी पुलिस जम्मू कश्मीर की पुलिस है सारे डिपार्टमेंट से इसमें लगे हुए हैं और इस पर अच्छे प्रबंध हैं। हमें डर नहीं लगा बिल्कुल भी हमने तो जाना है बाबा की इतनी मौज है कि डटा ही नहीं जा रहा बिल्कुल भी कि कब दर्शन करें। बहुत खुशी हो रही है और मैं आपको बताऊं कि हमारा देश हमारी आर्मी और हमारी सरकार इस पर हमें पूरा गर्व है और हमें भरोसा है की हमारी सुरक्षा करेगी इसलिए मन में ऐसा कहीं कुछ भी नहीं है Mumbai serial blast case convict Mustafa Dosa died of cardiac arrest in Mumbai on Wednesday. Dosa was hospitalized after he complained of chest pain, hypertension and diabetes. He was convicted along with uh, five others in the second leg of the trial in the 1993 serial blast case. The prosecution had alleged that Dosa was uh, one of the brains behind the conspiracy and that his responsibility towards the commission of the crime was the highest. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee expressed her concern over the implementation of GST. He said after the demonetization exercise the urgency in pushing GST through is another epic blunder by the center. She added that the economy is not yet ready to face the GST from July 1st. Mamata said her party will not attend midnight program at the Parliament House on June 30th to announce uh, the rollout of the GST. The CBI on Wednesday took over investigation of the 500 crore rupees online Ponzi scam. The scam involves some companies that allegedly took money from people by luring them with promised of uh, lucrative payments from every click on advertisements on their website. Now the probe agency took the complaint on directives from the Allahabad High Court.
time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. What is BJP without Narendra Modi? Modi ji is not separate from BJP. There is an effort to homogenize the society into a Hindutva society based on the hatred for Muslims. We have not imposed anything on the people. So our track record is the answer. For the current government, Kashmir is only about Pakistan and terrorism. People sitting in Delhi studios should understand that Kashmir is not a political issue. Watch to the point with National General Secretary of BJP, Ram Madhav, only on Rajya Sabha Television. The splendid, grand and massive new Buddhist copper dome of the Rashtrapati Bhavan. It gets its influence from stupa at Sanchi. The dome is more than twice the height of the rest of the building. The reinforced concrete shell of the outer dome began to be formed during the beginning of 1929. The last stone of the dome was laid on April 6, 1929. back you're watching Rajya Sabha television well Qatar has condemned Saudi Arabia for its refusal to negotiate the demands that it has made for ending a crippling embargo on the Emirate after holding talks with US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson in Washington Qatari Foreign Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani said that the Saudis position was unacceptable Sheikh Mohammed Said said uh, Saudi Arabia's uh, refusal to negotiate goes against all principles that govern international relations Saudi Arabia has been unbudging over the three-week-old dispute isolating Qatar under a trade and diplomatic embargo set by its Arab neighbors. Saudi Foreign Minister Adel al Jubair reiterated on Twitter that the 13 demands that have been set out are non-negotiable and that now it was up to Qatar to end its support for extremism and terrorism. Rex Tillerson also met Kuwaiti Minister of State for Cabinet Affairs Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah al Kuwait has been trying to play a mediating role in this rift between the Gulf nations. Well, the U.S. State Department placed China on its uh, this year's global list of the world's offenders in human trafficking. The report states that China does not fully meet the minimum standards for the elimination of trafficking. The agency also included Sudan and North Korea in the list. However, the agency's 2017 report upgraded the statuses of Myanmar, Afghanistan, Malaysia and Qatar while leaving those of Russia, Cuba and Thailand unchanged. The department dropped Iraq and Myanmar from countries that recruit and use child soldiers. The report sorts countries into three tiers, with tier three being the worst and tier one the best, based on how well the government acknowledges and deals with human trafficking problems in its country. China was downgraded to tier three status in this year's report, in part because it has not taken serious steps to end its own complicity in trafficking, including forced laborers from North Korea that are located in China. Companies across the globe are reporting that they have been struck by a major ransomware cyber attack. Hackers launched blistering ransomware attacks against companies and agencies across the world, particularly targeting Ukrainian businesses. Major global firms reported that they had been targeted, including British advertising agency WPP, Russian oil and gas giant Rosneft and Danish shipping firm Maersk. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant has also had to monitor radiation levels manually after its Windows-based sensors were shut down. The virus freezes the user's computer until a ransom is paid. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security advised victims not to pay the ransom, saying there was no guarantee that the access to files would be restored. The source of the attack is not yet clear. It is similar to WannaCry, which spread globally in May, but there are differences. Many firms have suggested the ransomware is a variant of Petya, a known ransomware. The international police organization Interpol has said it was closely monitoring the situation. There are likely close to 2,000 attacks due to recent ransomware attacks, most in Ukraine, Russia and Poland. 
По всій країні багато підприємств, як державного, так і приватного сектору, сьогодні практично в один той самий час були уражені вірусом, дуже подібним до вірусу вона край, який блокує файли на комп'ютерах. Але енергосистема працює в порядку, ми зараз з вами на диспетчерському щиті. It looks horribly like it, it might be using something very similar to the WannaCry um, ransomware that we saw. So this isn't people clicking on a link in a, an email and getting their computers infected. This looks like there's some automated mechanism spreading this. Um, it, it's, it, it, there's two possible mechanisms it seems to be narrowed down to at the moment, but it's, it's spreading extremely fast. Well, the European Union has handed Google a record-breaking $2.7 billion fine, the biggest fine imposed by Europe on any company ever. The EU accuses uh, the search engine for illegally favoring its own shopping service as customers use Google to search for products online. European regulators said that by artificially and illegally promoting its own price comparison service in searches, Google denied both its consumers' real choice and rival firms the ability to compete on a level playing field. The Silicon Valley giant has 90 days to stop its illegal activities and explain how it will reform its ways. The EU regulator is further investigating how else the company may have abused its position, specifically in its provision of maps, images and information on local services. Google, however, has disputed the EU's findings and said it is considering an appeal. The search giant maintains that its shopping service helps consumers and advertisers. Today, the Commission has decided uh, to fine Google uh, 2.4 billion euros for breaching EU antitrust rules. Google has abused its market dominance as a search engine by giving illegal advantages to another Google product, its shopping comparison service. Google must end this conduct within 90 days or face penalty payments. There's a roundup of the other international news in Global Buzz. A Venezuelan police helicopter launched an attack on the country's Supreme Court in Caracas on Tuesday. The helicopter was reportedly piloted by an officer in the country's investigative police force, Oscar Perez. President Nicola Maduro uh, condemned the attack in a televised address, uh, saying terrorists were behind the offensive. The police officer later released a statement denouncing the criminal government. Another landslide struck a village in southwestern China on Tuesday, where rescue workers are looking for nearly 100 people buried over the last weekend. No further casualties were reported in the second landslide as the area where the village once stood was evacuated on Monday. Germany's parliament plans to vote on a bill to legalize same-sex marriage on Friday after the lower house legislative committee put it on the agenda. The bill is widely expected to pass as it is backed by most parties. Chancellor Angela Merkel has told lawmakers of her centre-right party that they can vote according to their conscience. Well, moving on to some sports news now, where India's top singles tennis player Ramkumar Ramnathan recorded the biggest win of his singles career as he stunned world number 8 Dominic Thiem in the pre-quarterfinals of the Antalya Open. The world's 222nd ranked Ramnathan, who entered the tournament through the qualifiers, dominated the match throughout against the tournament top seed, TM winning 6-2, 6-3 in under an hour. This was Ramnathan's first ever victory over a top 10 player in the ATP rankings. He will next face veteran Cyprus star Marcos Bagdaitis in the quarterfinals. Well, three-time champion Andy Murray has been seeded first in the men's singles of the 2017 Wimbledon Championships. This is the first time Murray has been seeded at the top of Wimbledon. Murray is followed by two-time champion Novak Djokovic and seven-time winner Roger Federer. In the women's singles, Angelique Kerber tops the seedings, followed by Simona Halep, Karolina Pliskova and Elena Svitolina. The championships will begin on the 3rd of July and conclude on the 16th of July.
Well, here's a roundup of the other sports news and sports beat. Former South African batsman Gary Kirsten says that he is not in the race to be the coach for the Indian cricket team. Kirsten's name has been cited as one of the possible choices since he has already coached India from 2008 to 2011 and capped a successful tenure with the World Cup triumph in 2011. Lasit Malinga was suspended for a year after the fast bowler pleaded guilty to a breach of contract by uh, speaking without permission to the media. Malinga appeared before the Sri Lankan Cricket Special Inquiry panel and tendered a formal apology. He would also be fined 50% of uh, his match fee for his next one-day international. U.S. gymnastics investigator Deborah Daniels has alleged that the number of athletes victimized in the sport is far higher than the hundreds previously reported. She said the organization needs a complete culture change to protect young people from predatory adults who gain access to them under the cover of mentorship and counseling. Well, that's it on this newscast. Good night. Thank you.